In this video, we will review how to interact with external services using HTTP requests in the Open Autonomy Framework. Since interacting with external services is a proactive action, this has to be encoded into a behavior and not into a round. The framework provides a number of tools to interact with external services. You can find this tooling inside the Base Behavior class. These interactions are based on Python genera generators. That is, you need to call this method using the yield from construct from Python. The usage of custom methods, such as the raw usage of the request library, is discouraged. The reason for that is that if you use a blocking method, it will block the flow of execution of the agent. There are four steps required to define the interaction with an external service. First, you need to define the API specification on the skill.yaml. This information will be available in the skill context. Next, you need to define the model that supports this uh, specification for an API. And if it's necessary, you need to override this configuration and this model into any skill that is using your skill. This can also happen at agent or service level. As commented in the previous slide, we will be using the method response inside the, the main method of your behavior, which is async act. So now let's see an example on how this is implemented. We will be using the trader service as an example. If we go to packages, Valerie, skills, market manager, ABCI, this is a skill that is in charge of interacting with the Omen subgraph to collect information about markets. So the subgraph is using in this case an HTTP uh, interface and HTTP request to retrieve the information from the subgraph using the, um, the tooling provided by the framework. So if we go first to the skill.yaml, we can see here that uh, within the, the models, we have a network subgraph, which is, a, uh, which is defining an uh, API spec. We have another API spec, which is Omen uh, subgraph. So both of them are uh, the graph endpoints. So if uh, you uh, note, each one has uh, some arguments defined. Uh, which is the API ID, uh, the headers that we want to use, the method that we are going to use for this for requests on this uh, API endpoint, uh, the parameters that we want to pass, uh, response key. We, this is like the key of the JSON return that we would like to uh, retrieve when we pass the response. The type of the response. In this case, is the type of uh, this key in the output of on this uh, JSON uh, in this response from the JSON, and, and the retries we want to use, and finally the URL that where we are calling this endpoint. So we also need to define uh, one uh, class name, which in this case uh, we use Omen subgraph for this API endpoint and we use a network a subgraph for this other endpoint. So as uh, I commented, if this skill is going to be uh, reused, or let's say it is going to be a dependency of, of another skill, in this case, market manager is a dependency of the trader ABCI. So you will notice that we have the opportunity also to uh, override any uh, configuration that we have written uh, on the on the on the other skill. In this case, we are overri overriding this, and we are defining also some other uh, API endpoints, which uh, may uh, be from this uh, skill itself, or may be overriding from other skills being used by uh, this parent uh, skill. If uh, we go back to the original skill, uh, we realize that. Uh, when we define 
this API endpoint, omen subgraph, we need also to define on the models the corresponding um, object, the corresponding class, which must inherit from API specs, which is a base class. So here we have the import here, it's packages, valories, skills, abstract ground ABCI models, API specs. And this uh, will uh, provide uh, a number of functionality that we will require to process requests to that endpoint. So now let's dig into the behavior itself. So if we go to uh, uh, trader uh, packages, valory skills, market manager, I uh, will go to the behaviors. So here we have this behavior, which is called update bets behavior, which essentially is doing a call to this uh, Omen endpoint to update uh, the, the bets for this trader. So this is done at the start of the service. So the actual uh, business logic that it's executed here is not important at this point. We are just uh, focused on the fact that it's doing a, a call to this HTTP endpoint, to this uh, graph endpoint. So remember that the main method of uh, a behavior is the async act, which is where everything uh, starts. And if we go to the method here, update bets, uh, you see that this method is preceded by this yield from. This is because it's going to do a, a call that potentially could be blocking as such as an HTTP request. So this is going to take uh, place inside here. This is why we need to precede this with a uh, yield from in the, using these uh, Python generators. If we go inside this, uh, we have that at some point, so we don't care much about what is going here. We we realize that here again it's a calling yield from because this is going to do a potentially blocking uh, call inside this method. And if we go inside fetch bets here, we see finally here that we are calling the get HTTP response, which is a method which is provided by the base class of this behavior. And again, this is also preceded by yield from. And this is the actual point where we are going to make uh, a call to this uh, graph endpoint. So in this case, we are sending here the contents using like a custom method here, uh, the contents for this query to the subgraph. And we are also sending the API specs uh, for uh, where we want to execute this HTTP response, like the API API spec for the particular subgraph. So this is defined in this particular example through this attribute current subgraph, which is set somewhere else in the code. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, at this point. But if we examine this uh, object, what it is returning actually, it is an API specs object. So when we make the call using this get HTTP request, uh, we uh, we use this get spec and this will uh, unroll the necessary methods to execute this uh, query. So after we execute uh, this uh, query, we can call also using the API uh, spec object, uh, the method process uh, response and it will uh, execute some sort of processing of this response and retrieve uh, the result as we have specified in this, uh, for example, in this uh, format, like uh, we want uh, that uh, to retrieve this object, which is uh, a list of objects. And uh, finally, the way how you retrieve this information from, uh, uh, from the skill. So this is stored in the skill context. So retrieve. So in order to retrieve this uh, information, uh, you would uh, do in this case, for example, um, self dot context dot omen uh, 
subgraph, which uh, should match the name that you are giving here to this uh, entry in the in the YAML file. So, of course, alternatively, you can also use this uh, get HTTP response method uh, without uh, passing the um, API spec. In this case, you need to uh, pass the required parameters to this method, like uh, manually. So you can look at the at the help for this uh, for this method, uh, like you have like the URL, uh, the content he headers, uh, and so on. And you also need to manually pass the the response when when you uh, retrieve here. So the benefit of uh, executing this interaction using this uh, construct yield from uh, generator from Python and then call this method um, is that uh, you can program this as uh, you know if it is a sequential program without uh, having to understand how the uh, agent handles internally this request. Uh, and then the framework itself will uh, take ch charge of uh, sending this request, receive the response, and execute the retries, and so on. So, and finally, as a reminder, so any method that uh, uses uh, this kind of interaction, like get, uh, get HTTP response, uh, needs to be. Uh, of type generator. So that is, if uh, if this is uh, going to be used inside a method, so this method needs to return a type generator uh, non non optional list. In this case, if this method is used uh, in another method, as it was uh, the case for the, for uh, for this method, so the calling method also needs to be a generator as well. And uh, this is everything from this video. So thank you and see you in the next video.